We recently adopted a new economic development strategic plan. Uh, the, the old one had expired in 2017, and quite frankly, we had accomplished an awful lot of the goals that we had indicated in that first iteration of the plan. Now we're jumping into to the next phase. Let's go to the next slide, please. As you can see, the plan is to move business forward. We have been working very hard ever since, well, really since the start of the Great Recession to revitalize the region's business climate and make this a much more, a much stronger, larger, and more diverse economy. Let's go to the next slide, please. The plan has five strategies. I'll go through, I'll go through the list and just give you a, a brief description of each of them. Next slide. First, and you know, sort of this almost is, uh, goes without saying, but are, we're looking to maximize the, the extent of investment, private sector investment in the, in the region. Government can do a lot to stimulate in investment, but we can't actually make much of an investment. We have to rely on the private sector as our partners. Let's go to the next slide, please. As part of that, we have embarked on a new branding campaign to make clear to the business sector, to the private sector, that this is the right place to do business. And we've had a great deal of success in that respect. We have a new, the branding campaign, uh, Rivco Now, which is an indicator to people that now is the best possible time to come here. Our economy has really never been more diverse or stronger than it is today. We recently attracted the California Air Resources Board to our region. They'll be building a facility they have already broken ground on next to UCR. That is already attracting businesses who have to do business with the California Air Resources Board. This facility, which is our primary testing and research facility, is going to employ about 450 people. It's a $420 million investment in our region. And it is, as I said, it's stimulating a great deal of interest and investment already. And it's not going to open until 2021. Phase two is to stimulate that additional investment. We are now, right now, embarking on our second annual Innovation Month, which is, <coughs> excuse me, got a little scratchy throat this morning, um, is designed to stimulate interest in the innovation and tech sector in our region. It's a joint venture between the county and UCR. Uh, last year's was very successful, and we are looking to have an even bigger level of participation this month. It kicks, it kicks off April 3rd. We're also building a much more, <coughs> me, much more robust uh, workforce through partnerships with the Workforce Development Board. I won't talk too much about Slingshot. I suspect that Tim Rainey would, uh, would prefer to, to have that opportunity himself. But there are a lot of other strategies are <coughs> that are being uh, developed and implemented that will strengthen the region from an employer's perspective. One of the things that is a consistent message from the private sector is we need more qualified workers. Uh, and we're doing a great deal through our existing, thank you, <coughs> through our existing workforce development centers. We have three plus a mobile one stop. And we're making huge strides in, full, in filling those voids, but it's always, there's always more to be done. One of the problems we have right now, if you go to the next slide, <coughs> is that we have maybe done almost too good a job. In 2011, the unemployment rate in this county was about 15%. It's now down to 4.6. It, it bottomed out. It actually got to 4.3 in, uh, in January. So we're having, we're, we're actually running into a problem. When you go out to the private sector and say, come locate here, you have to be able to tell them that you're, they're going to be able to hire people. Hard, hard thing to do right now because everybody's got a job. When, when Amazon came in, Amazon by themselves now employs about 22,000 people in our region. That kind of took up all the folks who, can, who are qualified to, <laughs> to, to work. It's not the, the greatest employment necessarily. It's about 12 50 an hour, but it, it has employed huge numbers of people. They did a one-day hiring event in Hemet, hired 700 people in one day. And Hemet, by the way, is one of the most challenged economies in our region. <clears throat> one of the great partnerships we have, too, is with higher education. And your local college, Norco, the Norco branch of the Riverside Community College District, is a fantastic partner. They are doing really innovative things, especially in the, in the supply chain. It's, a, it's just a tremendous asset that you have right here in your backyard. 
and we've also got a home ta homegrown talent program that's, that's moving forward to kind of ensure that we're bringing people that are here already. We're not looking to, to have people moving into the county. We want to take advantage of the people we already have here. Let's move on to the next slide, please. We have also opened three business centers around the county. One, the closest one to here is in Riverside. Uh, it is about to be the home to a small business development center, which is part of the SBA. We have actually two small business development centers in the county. One, one's in Indio, and the other one is here. This is unique. There are only two county-owned SBDCs in the state, and we have one of them. And the second one is actually is sort of is co-owned, co-managed by the county and UCR. That's, op that's formally opening <coughs> excuse me, next month. It's a hugely important development because small business, one of the biggest challenges they face tends to be capital. SBDCs are the route to capital, and they also provide a great deal of mentorship um, and training for, small, for people in small business who want to go into small business. Next slide, please. One of the other things that we have developed is a, <coughs> again, uh, is a, uh, a small business incentive program. We have micro loans that are available, some of which are funded through the U.S. Economic Development Agency that, again, help fill that capital gap to get small business into business. And of course, small business is what has led us out of the recession in this region. Investments by Amazon are important, but also we have, there have been something like 8,000 startups in the county since 2011. It's an incredible ecosystem we have developed here. Let's go to the next slide. Infrastructure investments, obviously, is topical. Federal government's talking about it quite a bit, but we're, we kind of lead with our, we lead with our own resources here. Riverside County is what's called a self-help county. There are 12 in California. What that means is we find ways to raise our own capital to invest in infrastructure. Corona, obviously, has benefited from that quite a bit. If you look at the investments on the, on the 15, the 91, a lot of that money was locally raised. In fact, if we're not self-help, those programs, those projects don't happen. So that's one of the things that, that uh, was developed in the 60s something we should all be actually be very proud of because we actually take care of ourselves. We don't rely on the feds or the state because they're not always the best partners. <laughs> it's true. I wish it, I wish it were otherwise. Um, they, will, they will fill part of the gap, but they don't pay for everything. And if we can raise our own money, that, that demonstrates to them our own commitment, and it, it helps tremendously. Next slide, please. One of the other things we're doing, the Salton Sea, See, we're kind of far from the Salton Sea, only we're not. <clears throat> the dust from the Salton Sea can be toxic. If it starts traveling this way, that's a big problem. We actually at the Economic Development Agency are part of the, are part of the solution. We're creating what's called an infrastructure financing district to help fix that problem. Again, self-help. The state of California was supposed to solve this problem, and, and they've been delinquent in that responsibility. So we're working to make sure that, that actually, if the Salton Sea does truly die, that's going to hurt our entire region's economy. So we're working very hard to make sure that does not happen. We also, we're, <clears throat> we're the largest solar generating uh, power uh, county in the United States, both in terms of utility scale uh, solar installations and also in solar installations that are owned by the county itself. We, we generate more power as a county than any other county in the United States. We also have a tremendous amount of infrastructure dedicated to electric vehicles. Uh, we've got about 100 charging stations that have been paid for partly by the California Energy Commission through grants that we've, uh, that we've received. So it's, been a it's just been a tremendous investment. Next slide, please. Finally, we're, we're working very hard. It's <coughs> is, is no secret. There's a big problem with homelessness. Um, we're working very hard to, to solve that. In fact, amongst veterans, any, veter any veterans in the room? Yeah, we've actually reached functional zero. Thank you. <clears throat> thank, thank you for your service. But we, we actually reached functional zero in terms of veteran homelessness. We're the first county in the United States to do that, which what that means is homeless veterans in this county get housed right away. You can't get to absolute zero. Your population's too large. But every time we find a, a homeless veteran, we house them. We're also working to develop additional affordable housing uh, options so that we can provide housing for people who are, who are challenged. There are a lot of people in this county who are spending over 50% of their income on housing. 
that is an excessive burden, and it really does, it creates a, a, a problem for the region's economy. I think I have one slide left. Let's go to that. So we have <coughs> affordable housing is actually a legal definition. It means it's housing that is, that is restricted to certain income levels, and we're developing about 800 units of that now. This guy in the back named Tony Mize. He's one of, the one of our partners in that. Is those are always public-private partnerships. So, Tony, thanks for all that you do. And anybody else who in, the, uh, in that industry who's in the room, thank you. The preceding presentation was made possible by William Scott Global, a communications firm that creates ongoing corporate video news content for U.S. companies while developing national media distribution strategies that reach targeted niche markets. WilliamScottGlobal.com, news and media distribution experts. And by America's Legacy, helping executives and community leaders share their life stories so future generations can intimately experience their contributions, the moments in their life that define them, from their greatest achievements to their worst mistakes. AmericasLegacy.us.